Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to the shop. I thought I would give you guys a bit of an update of some of the things that are going on around here. There has been so much stuff going on. We got the door contractors been in and out of here over the last few days. We got the framers and stuff upstairs. The electrician's been hard at work and I thought today we would give you guys, well, a little update. One of the first things we needed to do was to seal off my shop from the business below us because there's somebody that leases the spot on the other side so technically i'm in my shop now i'm inside of their business <laughs> so uh there used to be a door right there so they're sealing off all this stuff here there was a set of double doors there that's them so now we won't be able to get in there. They won't be able to get into here. So much stuff going on. And then for us to access the upstairs, they have cut a door in right here in the corner. There'll be another door entrance there so we can go upstairs. This used to be open as well too, into their business. This will now be a hallway so we can get to the awesome upstairs space. Over here in the corner used to be one of the pallet entry doors. They have now framed it all in. So now the electrician's gonna move some of this electrical stuff and add a couple more plugs along this wall for me. The other pallet entry door, this one here, we're actually putting another garage door here. I talked to the door guy the other day and thought about doing just like one of those little roll-up doors, like the ones you guys see on, uh, like if you rent a storage locker, like one of those little doors. He recommended not to because they don't, they're not insulated, so if it's ever cold down there, and heat it up here, then we're gonna lose a ton of heat through this door. And he recommended just to go with a small garage door, so that's what we're doing there. So over here is gonna be the hot water tank closet. There'll be a door on the end there. He's standing where the small little staff kitchen's gonna be, just be a center sink and uh, just an open countertop. We're also putting kitchen cabinets along the side there. And yeah, inside of this room here, because it was actually built with the hot water tank, We'll also have a bit of extra room for some storage and cleaning supplies or whatever else. But yeah, things are coming along in here. Here's my shower. This is where you guys will be seeing all of those world famous Van City Van Life shower scenes. <laughs> oh, guys, so cool. It's nice to start seeing this stuff like come alive and oh, this is so fun. Well, that's a wrap for me over here for the holiday season, my friends. We, oh, so warm in here, I left the heater on. We, uh, we're gonna head over to the mainland, I think. I gotta make a pit stop at the shop and uh, grab some batteries and stuff back here so we have enough power to get us through uh, however long we're over there on the mainland and grab some food for Cruzy. And uh, yeah, <laughs> damn it, Christmas is right here. It's been so fun to see this dream of mine unfold over here. <laughs> oh, guys. It's a good time in life right now. Let's go. Come on, bud. We're all packed up. Let's go. We got our Christmas presents here for everyone. I got you some presents too, bro. Look how dark it is outside and it's only 4.42 p.m. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Gas on this island has been pretty darn cheap. Diesel is 189.9 and regular gas is $1.49. You guys can't even see that, 49.9. We haven't seen gas as cheap as $1.49.9 out here in quite some time. Too bad diesel wasn't 149.9. We gotta fill up both diesel tanks. I got Cruzy some more presents for his stocking. Some more balls and another teddy bear. I'm really excited when I open up that stocking and balls roll all over the floor and he goes, oh, which one? All right, we're gonna go find ourselves a place to sleep tonight.
it's kind of a weird angle this one this one's kind of curved this way and curved up this way drive up the road a little bit yeah I don't mind if it's like curved straight up but that one's got a really big curve to the dip curve to the dip curve curve to the curb There's some new apartments over there oh at yeah. oh, the curb there's some new apartment developments over there maybe that side would be better I like sleeping in these areas. Right in front of apartment buildings, not a big deal. I'll park right there. The spot there would be okay, but there's a big open area on this side and there's nothing up here. There's apartment construction and a field. And this is a good spot right there, baby. Yeah, get it. When I first moved into my van, these places were my comfort zone. I absolutely loved sleeping around apartment buildings and other people. Maybe it was like the little city boy in me, but I absolutely used to love these areas. Who are these for? There's a big blue present and a big shiny chrome present and a little baby box present. Inside here has a bunch of little presents too. Who do you think those are for, buddy? See, he's sniffing, he's like, I don't smell anything, Dad, they're probably not for me. This carpet was a good idea. So there's a little, this little knobby thing there. <laughs> My carpet's got a little nipple. <laughs> oh, lost our Christmas tree. What's going on here? Here we go. Not sure, it's got a squeaker. And you're getting spoiled these days, buddy. You realize the entire world's gonna hear you out there, right? <laughs> hey, I think this is called stealth camping or something like that. Can't do that with you squeaking. Oh my gosh, last night, he chewed that thing for like a half an hour. I'm lying in bed in the dark trying to sleep and all I hear is squeak, 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 squeak. That was his other toy. He got him a couple new ones. <laughs> Sometimes he just goes crazy. He sit there and chews a squeaky, squeaky. Normally I always say, if you're gonna sleep in urban areas like this, pull over with one plan sleep that's it no hanging out no cooking no nothing just pull over here sleep get up and leave in the morning cruzy because <laughs> what happens is the world outside starts to hear everything especially when you're in an uninsulated van all this noise is going straight outside so if someone's walking by they're gonna be like what <laughs> just squeaking in the back of that van Oh, buddy, little gingerbread men. You can hear everything. Oh, 
that's the thing about being in a van in a residential area, especially one like mine that has no insulation. If I can hear them talking as they walk by the van, that means they can hear every single thing that I'm doing in here. So I think it's time for us to shh for a bit. And I'm glad Cruzy wasn't chewing on his toy because, whoa, bro. You're that car? We're in a residential area. Easy now. Oh, but I'm glad Cruzy wasn't chewing on a squeaky toy because that's the stuff that sets off alarms for people. When they walk by a vehicle and they hear noise inside of it, and if they're the kind of person that gets scared with stuff like that, they're going to call the police. The police are going to come by and they're just probably going to ask you to move on. First thing they're going to do is like, hey, what's that noise in there? And I'm going to be like, this is my dog. He's doing his squeaker. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, but I've never been in trouble that way. I've never had that knock asking me to move out of the community, nothing like that. I think the key to this is not the type of vehicle you drive. It's not, it doesn't matter if you're in a camper van like mine that says van life all over it, or if you're just in a regular van that looks like a plumber's van. I don't think it really makes a difference. I think the key is they should not physically see you living in the van. Meaning don't leave your lights on or the curtains down or people walk by and they can see you in the back cooking or outside, you know, arranging your home outside. You know what I mean? Pull up to these areas, treat them as your bedroom, pull up, climb through, go to bed, get up in the morning and move out of the neighborhood. If you can do that in those places and you kind of go unseen they may see the camper van who cares if they see the camper van as long as they don't see you living in it then you can repeat that area as many times as you want just don't do it day after day after day but you could repeat that spot every week and i guarantee you keep that rotation you won't have any problems whatsoever <sighs> anyway guys it was awesome to have you in my shop with me over there that is the most exciting thing going on in my life right now and everything inside of me is on fire for that place. I'm just so stoked about all of it. And having you guys ride along with me for part of that journey means the world to me. That shop there is literally the accumulation of everything I've done in my van life. Every time I never had to pay rent for a traditional place to sleep at night, I'd save a part of that rent money, put it in the bank, and over the last six years, it's allowed me to put my dreams into play. Think about that. Oh, guys, so if you've got this dream in your mind and there's been things holding you back like paying too much for rent, van life is an option. <laughs> a hundred percent an option this lifestyle can can be freedom for some people that feel trapped this lifestyle can be a way to save money to make the best out of your pensions as you retire this lifestyle can also be a way for someone like me who still likes to grind and work hard to be able to save money for six years of not paying rent and then at the end of all that six years Take that little nest egg you've been saving and start your dream. That's the beautiful thing about van life and not living traditionally is it is a little cheaper. And if you've still got that income coming in, it allows you to do more things, gives you more freedom. Uh, anyway, guys, I, I'm having a lot of fun with this new stage. So give me a thumbs up on this video if you guys are going to continue rolling along with me. We have so much fun stuff happening as soon as we get back after Christmas, all oh, those parts from Ford better be here because I am ready to go home and go out and find some snow, do some snow camping and mm, go get the van stuck. And all the fun things that I love to do is all coming in the new year. It should be a fun one. I'm hoping that we can leave 2023 behind and 2024 has no breakdowns. Do you realize 2023 has been the only year I've just, the only year out of the whole whole time I've been in van life, we've had breakdowns. This bit, it, it sucked. <laughs> That's what I think about that. All right, y'all. Tomorrow morning, we're getting on the ferry first thing and heading over to the lower mainland because it's Christmas, my friends. So if you have any tips for places in Vancouver to go see some serious Christmas lights, Man, I, I remember back in the day, I used to know where all these cool places are. But if you do have any tips and tricks on where to find some rad Christmas lights, let me know. And maybe we'll go drive around some neighborhoods and find some cool stuff. All right, y'all. See you soon. Bye.